Let's talk about how to skull cavern in Stardew Valley 1.6. With the new release of 1.6, there's tons of new items and elements added to Stardew Valley that will now change the way we can tackle and dominate this dungeon. I'm going to share with you beginner advanced and legendary tips on how you can come in here and absolutely tear through this dungeon like it's child's play. There's now new rewards added to Skull Cavern for every 100 floors you ascend. I'm going to show you the best ways to get down to those floors, but first, let's start at the beginning and we'll work our way up slowly but surely. The first thing we have to do to unlock Skull Cavern is either clear all of the vault bundles or go to the Georgia Mart here and unlock the bus for 40,000 gold. Now that would just give you access to the desert. To get into the actual Skull Cavern itself, you just have to get down to floor 120 in the regular mines, pick up the Skull Key, and you can now do the Skull Cavern every single day. You can do it as much as your heart desires. But the Skull Cavern is no easy feat for beginners. There's a few items I recommend you take before you go in there. The first is to maximize your inventory space. Get the two backpack upgrades. Now the second backpack upgrade does cost 10,000 gold. That can be quite a lot for beginner players, but it is absolutely worth it because when you go into the Skull Cavern, there are so many different items you can pick up. If you don't win with all of the backpack upgrades, you're going to spend half of your time trying to figure out what to throw away and what to keep. I recommend at least a steel pickaxe going into the Skull Cavern, reason being it just takes two swings on a steel pickaxe to break open a regular node. It's also two swings for the gold, so my advice is to go from steel, and then when you have the resources, try to chain upgrade to an Iridium pickaxe. If you select the Mushroom Cave, it is worth your while to now keep all of those mushrooms, especially the ones that are needed to make life elixirs. I'm going to show you a little life elixir farm later on in the video. If you pick up jades, rubies or diamonds, absolutely keep those as well. You'll need those later on for staircases, spicy eels and triple shot expressos. They would be the basics of how you can succeed in the Skull Cavern. You should also be focusing on monster eradication goals to unlock some of the very powerful rings the game has to offer. And if you don't have a whole lot of money to spend, you should also make your way down into the mid-level of the mines and start farming up coal and iron ores so you can make yourself some bombs. To make bombs, you need a mining level of six, so I would strive for that before you start venturing into the Skull Cavern. You should also focus on leveling up your combat skill. The higher your combat level, the higher your HP. And trust me, you want to go into the Skull Cavern with lots of HP because the enemies hit quite hard. When you get level two combat, you learn the recipe for the life elixir. You get it quite early, which is good. That means you can focus on gathering mushrooms for this and saving them up. So when the time comes, you can spam life elixirs. When you get level 5 mining, I recommend the minor perk for beginners. Because the extra ores means extra bars for you. And iridium bars early on sell for quite a lot of money. A thousand gold. If you have the blacksmith perk, 1500 gold. I recommend to always take the fighter for beginner level combat players. You can always go scout later when you have a more advanced setup. When you get specific rings, specific perks, scout can be quite fun. The critical strike builds are actually quite fun. Level 6 mining does give you the bomb, and that is the minimum requirement, in my opinion, for starting the Skull Cavern runs. The cherry bomb is also quite useful, so if you have some copper ores lying around, I recommend you make a few of those just for blowing up the mummies earlier in the game. The mummies do drop cloth, drop miners treats, and they do yield some decent combat experience, so they are worth farming if you have some cherry bombs to spare. Now you will occasionally come across copper and iron in the Skull Caverns, so if you do run out of bombs, do not worry, you can make more bombs as you go along. For the life elects, you need a red and purple mushroom, a moral and a chanterelle. You can get all of those using mushroom logs, and I'm going to show you some pretty cool mushroom log setups in a few minutes. It's also worth going to Gus and purchasing some salads if you can afford them. 220 gold will get you one salad. It heals you for 50 health and that's very nice starting off the game. I would recommend you get at least 25 of these salads before you do your first Skull Cavern run. If you can afford more, I'd get them. If you're low on cash, I recommend going to floor 60 in the regular mines and just fishing up some ghost fish. It is quite easy to get perfect catches on these and an Iridium Star Goldfish will give you 44 health which is very nice indeed. Now, if you have trouble pulling up huge amounts of ghost fish, don't worry. Just make yourself a bait maker 
put some ghost fish inside and reap the rewards. Once you have all of those items assembled, it's worth going out to the desert a few days or the day before you do a Skull Cavern run and just purchase some warp totems for some Omni Geodes if you have them. You can get Omni Geodes in the regular versions of the mines, you can home up from the ground as well. Look for the Book of Power called Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Thick. You can get this from hoeing up the ground. Just gives a plus one to defense. It is a game changer at the start of the game. Also try to get the Dwarf Scrolls as quickly as you can to get the Dwarvish Translation Guide. This way you can have a chat with the lovely Dwarf and you can purchase some of his wares. He does sell the Dwarvish Safety Manual. Now it does cost 4,000 gold if you can afford it. I recommend it because bombs deal 25 less damage to you. So you're not hurting yourself as much when you get caught in your own explosions. He also sells bombs, but they're now more expensive than what they used to be. So I would only recommend you purchase bombs when you're making hundreds of thousands of gold when you're in the end game. For now, you're better off to just make them. Check the telly in the morning time. If you have a lucky or a super lucky day, pop that warp totem straight away and go to the desert. The warp totems are great because you can go at 6 o'clock instead of 10 o'clock for the bus. Purchase some trip shot expressos and spicy eels from the minerals you've collected and then stroll down into Skull Caverns. Now if you get long windy floors like this, starting out I just recommend you transverse them. Don't try to waste energy or pop a staircase. You're always going to get coal at the end which is great. You need coal to make bombs. If you see staircases, just take and try to get down as quickly as possible. The serpents can be quite the threat at the start. But now Concerned Ape has added some improved combat mechanics and swinging downwards now has an increased range, so the serpents aren't as bad as they used to be. If you see iron ores, I would prioritize them early on because you will eventually run out of bombs when you start getting to the good iridium ores. And if you have some iron ores in reserve, you can make a lot more bombs and that would sustain you for much longer in the Skull Cavern. All of the enemies in the Skull Cavern drop specific items. The serpents can drop spicy eels. The mummies can drop miner's treats. The crabs can drop crab cakes. So, the Skull Cavern is everything you need to thrive. Just like Georgia. <laughs> you will occasionally see armoured bugs in the Skull Cavern. They are invincible. But you can get some enchants that are on that can wipe them out, such as the bug killer. You're also going to come across purple slimes and giant purple slimes. It is worth killing them sometimes because they can occasionally drop iridium ores and other goodies. All of the enemies in the Skull Caverns, to be honest with you, have a chance to drop prismatic shards and other goodies as well. If you see clumps of ore like that, it is worth putting on a bomb and just getting those resources. Iron and gold is still quite valuable. You need those to make a lot of items in the future. Gold, for example, is needed to make crystallariums. Iron is needed to make kegs, quality sprinklers. If you come across small ambush floors like this, I do recommend just killing the enemies and then popping the staircase naturally instead of using up one of the staircases that you made. The dinosaurs are also quite rare in Skull Cavern, so it is worth killing them just to get those monster eradications goals unlocked anyway. What you're seeing right now is an uncut version of me going into the Skull Cavern for the very first time with just some of the basic resources. So I just have a couple of bombs, I've got a few staircases just in case I get some really bad ambush rooms. I don't want to waste a whole lot of time in those rooms. If I come across diamonds, it is a godsend. Not only can you trade that in for a Chubshot Espresso, you can also sell it for 750 gold and you also get a lot of mining experience for breaking open diamonds. So if you do see a diamond in the Skull Cavern, it is still precious. You should absolutely collect it if you have the time to spare. You will occasionally come across holes in the Skull Cavern and a hole can drop you down up to a maximum of 15 levels. So you can actually get quite lucky and you could find yourself literally just flying through floors very quickly if luck is on your side. You will occasionally come across barrels in the Skull Cavern. If you see them, wipe them out. There is a chance you could get a lucky ring in one of these barrels. Now the lucky ring is incredibly rare, but you'd be very surprised after you whack open enough of these barrels, you might just get one. Now you can also pan it up and I will show you some really good panning spots later on in the video and I'll show you how easy it is to get lucky ring as of patch 1.6. Now while you're in the Skull Cavern, keep an eye on your buffs. Triple Shot Express buff is always the first to go, so if you find your character has slowed down, pop another one straight away. The faster your character 
the easier it is to evade a lot of enemies, meaning you're taking less damage, you're using less resources to heal yourself. You don't want to be spamming salads every few seconds, you know? It's also worth remembering too that if you do get swarmed by monsters and your health gets low, you can very easily go into your start menu, it will pause the game for you, just take a few deep breaths, relax, and then just pop a healing item. Everything is going to be okay. Most of the enemies in the Skull Cavern are quite slow, they are quite easy to evade, even the mummies are quite slow. Now they do hit hard, so you have to be careful, especially on the smaller levels where you don't have a whole lot of room to evade them. If you ever find yourself cornered, my advice is to just kill the mummy. If you have a cherry bomb, detonate it and get some nice XP and rewards in the process. So we're now on the floor 20s and we just found some Iridium Ore. The further you get down, the more Iridium Ore you're going to find. And this is one of the main reasons you come into the Skull Cavern. It's to farm hundreds and thousands of Iridium Ores. Because you can use that to turn into Iridium Bars. You can sell those bars for lots of money or you can use those bars to make a lot of the end game items the game has to offer. Now when you jump down holes, depending on how deep the hole was, you will lose health. So just be careful, when you drop to the next floor, sometimes serpents literally come out of nowhere and they could snipe you to death. So when you do drop down a hole, check your health straight away. Also, if your health is very low and you do see a hole, sometimes it's good to just top your health up before you go down so you don't land on some dangerous scenarios. At the moment, we're doing quite well. We have descended a good few levels and it's only 11.40, so it's still the morning time. This run turns out to be a very good run, and it was my very first time to come in here. Now, you could come in here, and it could be a terrible run for you. Even though you could come in here on a very lucky day, sometimes the luck just isn't there. Don't be afraid to reset the day and save on your precious resources. Because sometimes it can take a very long time to save up the bombs, save up the healables, save up those rubies and diamonds to get those triple shot expressos and buff boots. So if you do come in here and you're only on floor maybe 5 or 10 and it's already halfway through the day, consider just restarting the day and just coming back in. Now I'm using the Obsidian Edge at the moment. It's not the best weapon in the game, but it will do the job for you when you're venturing through the Skull Cavern. It will wipe out the enemies. It does take a good few swings, but you'll get there. If you're not very good at combat, you could always just save up for a couple of more weeks or months and you could treat yourself to a lava katana and you can get that inside the adventure skill now it does cost a lot of money it's, i think it's over 20 grand but it is a very nice weapon and it is in my opinion just as good as the galaxy weapons it does give a nice defense stat as well now since patch 1.6 has hit the prismatic shard has become ever so slightly rarer it used to be more common but concerned ape has nerfed it a little bit so my advice is that when you get the first prismatic shard swap that in straight away for a galaxy weapon you will get the galaxy sword but it will unlock the galaxy series inside adventure skill so you can choose between the dagger the sword and the hammer now you will have to purchase those weapons using money but the options are there for you if you want to swap around your playstyle in the future but when you do get your hands on the galaxy sword it does make combat a lot easier because the sword has some very good attack power stats and it's also very quick. You should also consider going back to the regular mines and completing a lot of the monster eradication goals. There's a lot of overpowered rings in this game. There's a lot of rings that would make life much easier for you. The crab shell ring, for example, it gives a plus five defense. If you combine the two of those together on different ring slots, that's a plus 10 defense. There's very, very few enemies in this game that would hit you for more than a few pieces of damage if you had two of those rings on. You've also got the Slime Charm Ring for killing slimes. That makes you immune to all slime damage. The Burglar Ring gives you a much greater item drop chance from enemies. So there's loads of different combinations that you can go with. Now I'll show you a few combinations in this video that I like to use and I'll explain my reasoning for it. But everyone has their own personal preferences when it comes to combat builds. Stardew Valley is an in-depth game. It does have a lot of combat configurations. It also has high crit builds, it has speed builds, it has tank builds. And all of those builds can be overpowered depending on what kind of endgame items you got. Now what I'm doing here now is I'm prioritizing these armored crabs because I find these one of the toughest enemies to clear for monster eradication goals. And I do want that crab shell ring for myself. Especially starting out in the Skull Cavern. 
So if I do see Iridium crabs or any sort of crab enemy, I do destroy it. The crabs can also drop crab cakes. It's a plus one speed and a plus one defense. It's not bad. It gives you a speed buff and a defense buff. Now the spicy eel gives you a speed buff and a luck buff. So you're trading the luck for defense. But if you don't have the greatest of combat skills, if your health is quite low, it is worth taking. Survivability is of course the most important stat when it comes to hitting the skull cavern. Luck is great too, but you should always prioritize your survival over anything else if you want to make the most out of a skull cavern run. At the moment, we're on 73 inside skull cavern. It's only 10 past three, so we're doing really well. And we still have lots of bombs left. If we do run out of bombs, we have gathered a lot of iron ores now. We can easily make more bombs to replenish our stocks. And that will sustain us quite well. Now, there are enchants and rings we can get in the future that will make killing some of these enemies trivial. The Crusader enchant will absolutely annihilate all of these undead enemies. The ghosts, the mummies, it will just literally kill them in a few hits if you put them on a good weapon like an infinity weapon or a galaxy weapon. The ghosts can drop some really nice items. They can drop lots of Omni Geodes, which is great for trading in for more Desert Warp Totems. You can also trade in the Omni Geodes for treasure troves, and you need those to get some really cool artifacts if you're going for perfection. The Napalm Ring is also a magnificent ring that causes enemies to explode upon death. That will also pack in the mummies as well for you. I find that when you get past 450, you will occasionally start to see Iridium nodes. You might not see them in great amounts, but you will see the occasional one here and there. So your chances of getting that prismatic shard greatly increase. Now, I do hit a lot of Iridium nodes today. I only end up with maybe one or two prismatic shards that have become quite rare. But you will get one eventually, so don't worry about it. I've just run out of bombs, but I have enough iron ores that will allow me to make 12 more bombs, which is pretty nice. And that's why it's so important to come in here when you have at least a mining level of 6, so you can make those bombs. Because if I didn't have the ability to make those bombs, I'd be stuck using my pickaxe all the time, and it's 2 swings per node, and you wouldn't make half the progress you could make with bombs. It's just so nice to just blow everything up. Those Iridium nodes require a lot of strikes as well with a steel pickaxe. It's at least five strikes to break one open. So if you do see iron ores, even if you get down deep, you should definitely prioritize them. As we can see, I'm still putting bombs down between gold ores and iron ores because I need them. When you get a higher mining skill, you will learn the mega bomb. Now you do need gold ores to make that. You also need some solar essences. But you do get those inside her quite a lot and solar essences do drop from the ghosts and from the mummies. So you can quite easily stock up on mega bombs too in the future. And they're very nice. They have a much greater blast radius. And because you can now get the book of power from the dwarf that reduces bomb damage, they're not too bad when you take damage from one. And 25% is pretty good. When it comes to doing the most successful skull cavern runs, the main stat you want to focus on is luck. The more luck you come in here with, the more success you're going to find. The more odds that you're going to find on a staircase or a hole, that means you can get down deeper, you're going to get a lot more resources. And you can actually do extraordinarily well now with all of the new items added to the game. I'm going to show you all of the new luck buff items that have been added. I'm going to show you a super crazy luck build towards the end of the video. It's just absolutely insane. For now though, we're going to stick with our uncut version of progressing through our very first Skull Cavern. The main reason why I'm showing you a full uncut version is because I've received a lot of comments from people wanting uncut versions of things. They want to see how I tackle something from the start of the day to the finish. So I'm going to show you the full day of this, but the future Skull Cavern runs, I'll just show you some snippets. I also want to prove to people that you don't need to come down to the Skull Cavern when you have maxed out skills and hundreds of bombs. You can come down here with just a handful of things and you can do very well. It's not as hard as people make out. Now, when you get past a certain floor, I believe it's floor 50, the regular bats get replaced with Iridium bats. Now, those things hit like trucks. If you think the serpents are bad, the Iridium bats have a lot more HP. They're a lot more ferocious. They're a tad bit slower, so they're much easier to repel. But when you get attacked by a huge flock of them, can be quite demanding to stay alive. But I'm a big believer in no risk, no reward. If you do destroy Iridium Bats, they can drop some pretty cool things. They can drop energy tonics. It gives you back a ton of health and a ton of energy. 
They also drop battery packs, and you need those to make iridium sprinklers and crystallariums. So obviously when you're coming down to Skull Caverns, you're going to be getting resources that will help you make those. That's going to make your life back on the farm way easier. We're now getting lots of iridium ores. We're getting lots of gold ores. We're getting lots of everything because we're getting down deeper. So a lot more resources are becoming available to us. The serpents now and the iridium bats pose a great threat, especially when you have to fight them together. But just keep your cool. Swing when they get close. Eventually they will die. As I said... The obsidian sword, it's not a bad weapon. It will do the deed for you. Just give it a chance. Now, we have gotten past floor 25. That means we will get 10,000 gold in the mail from Mr. Key. And it's very nice to get that, especially if you can come in here in spring and you can grab that 10,000 gold for summer. And that is a tactic I always try to do during any of my playthroughs because it's a lot of money at the start of the game and it does give you quite a number of options that you can utilize in summer. For example, starfruit. Now we are down on floor 101. We've just got our first chest. And every time you get to floor 100, you are absolutely guaranteed that chest. If you make it to floor 200, you will get two chests. And if you make it to floor 300, you will get three chests. But beware, if you make it to floor 400, you will not get any additional chests. You actually won't get anything. You're just going to get a random so a cavern floor that might not even be a treasure room. So the perks are there for the 100, 200 and 300 floors. But you don't get anything extra when you get to floor 100. So just beware of that when you're spamming staircases. My advice is to stop after you've hit floor 300. And just start farming as per usual. There isn't much beyond that to be honest with you. By the time you get down to floor 300. There's going to be iridium ores, iron ores. There's going to be all manner of minerals all over the place for you to farm with bombs. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Skull Cavern, who don't like going to Skull Cavern, if you die, it is not the end of the world. If you slay a thousand monsters in this game, you can get access to a back room in the Adventurer's Guild. Inside lies a book of power. The book will give you a 50% discount on Marilyn's Retrieval Service. So if you lost something precious, do not worry. Sir Nape has now made the game a little bit more forgiving when it comes to getting knocked out in the Skull Cavern or any other place for that matter. So it's not the end of the world if you get knocked out. You can get your items back. Don't worry about it. If you're on the bench about coming to the Skull Cavern already, my advice is just come in and see what happens. As long as you bring in healables, that's, that's the very minimum requirement. Just bring in some salads or some ghost fish with you or some mushrooms and you'll be fine. There'd be no hassle. When you're inside a skull cavern, time goes a little bit slower. So you actually have a lot more time in here to farm the resources before you go unconscious. My advice is to never leave this place when it gets close to 2 o'clock. Just stay here, pass out and take the hit. You could lose some money, but it's worth spending extra time in there. Especially if you're on a roll and you're getting down into the deep floors and you're getting some decent resources. Just stay here, pass out. All you're going to lose, potentially lose, is money. You won't lose any of the items that you picked up. Sometimes you can get warp totems back to the farm. If you have a warp totem back to the farm, you could activate that at 10 minutes to 2 and just run into your house to save on the money. But if you don't have warp totems back to the farm, just stay here until you pass out. It's going to be alright. If you have a lot of money on you and you're worried about losing a few thousand gold, you can always just invest it. Spend it on crops, plant the crops. I only have 123 gold at the moment. Blow it all on salads. So when you pass out, you have nothing to worry about. The most they could bill you there would maybe be 10 or 20 gold. Which is pennies at this stage of the game. The great thing about serpents is that they always make a big hissing sound before they actually come at you. So even when you hear that hissing sound, you don't see them on the screen. Just brace yourself. They are coming. They are quite fast. If a serpent ever takes you from behind, don't panic. Just push the right click on your mouse. If you have a sword out, you will do a parry. If you have a hammer out, you'll do a ground slam and you will repel them back. So you don't have to take back damage at all. So I'm out of regular bombs now at the moment. I'm using cherry bombs. Now cherry bombs only have a very small explosive radius. However, it's still a bomb and it will still one shot any node that I put it near. So cherry bombs are still quite useful. And if I have copper ores, it's 
definitely worth making them because it's going to save you a lot of time using that steel pickaxe to break open these nodes. Even if you had an iridium pickaxe, it would still save you time because those iridium ores still take a few swings. Now we just have some iron ores here so we can very quickly build up our regular bombs again if we want to. You'll also notice that I have over 400 stone in my inventory just from detonating nodes. I could very easily turn that stone into four staircases if I found myself in a tight spot. So if you ever run out of staircases and you find yourself in a tight spot, don't panic. Just go into your inventory, see how much stone you have. You get lots of stone in the scout cavern. Don't be afraid to just make yourself a staircase and go into the next level and hope for the best. You'll also notice the big stone chunks. I don't mind those a whole lot, but they will give you 10 stone a piece. And that's worth note, that's a lot of stone that you can get from them. If you take into consideration now the amount of enemies that I've killed, the amount of ores that I've mined open, I'm going to get a lot of skill ups from this. So even if I've totally drained my energy today, I'll wake up the next day with full energy because I get a skill up. Every time you skill up in Stardew Valley, regardless of even if you got the exhaustion debuff from the day before, your character will be a brand new person the next day. So skill ups are totally overpowered. The only other buff I recommend you come in here with, potentially, is a magnetism buff. So if you can get your hands on an iridium band, even a magnet ring early on, that's quite useful because you're blowing up so many ores, you're going to save a lot of time if they just magnetize to you. We're now in the last in-game hour of Skull Cavern, and we're doing really well here. We've hit an absolute ton of iridium nodes. We also have our prismatic shard, so we can now upgrade that into a gangster weapon. That's our second prismatic shard right there. We're going to keep that one though. So my advice, any prismatic shards you get after the first, keep them. You can trade them in for magic rock candy every time you get three. And the magic rock candy is something that you should be aiming for when it comes to future Skull Cavern runs to get the most out of these runs. Because that magic rock candy gives a huge luck buff. It also gives buffs to everything else. For example, your defense, your attack power, your mining skill. It's, it's just an amazing candy all around. It's the most powerful buff food in the game. So we're now going to pass out very soon. And I'm just going to show you it's not the end of the world if you pass out in here. We're not going to lose any items. The only thing we might lose is just a small bit of money. And that's about it. I've run out of bombs. So we just use my pickaxe to get the last few iridium ores. I made it down to floor 132. And that's not bad for the first Skull Cavern attempt. And this is something that you can achieve in spring. If you do a lot of fishing and a lot of farming. So I got two levels of mining today. I can now make mega bombs. Let's take a look at some of the items I got. I got over 180 iridium ores. I got two prismatic shards. I got rubies. I got diamonds. I got lots of omni geodes. Got a piece of hardwood there, which is nice. I got some iridium bars, which is very nice as well. I also got some artifacts and some solar essences. I got cloth. So it was a real good run. I got lots of great items. All those iridium ores now can be turned into iridium bars. They are going to sell for tons of money. My advice, don't sell the bars until you get level 10 mining, unless you really need cash. Because if you wait till level 10 and you get the blacksmith perk, those bars go from 1,000 gold to 1,500 gold. It's a 50% increase, and that is nothing to snuff at, especially if you have tons of bars. You should go to the desert the next day, or whenever you have time, trade in your first prismatic shard for the galaxy sword. This would unlock the Galaxy series inside the Adventurer's Guild. The Galaxy Hammer is especially good because of the ground pound, but everyone has their own preference when it comes to combat. The Obsidian Edge pales in comparison to the attack power of that Galaxy Sword. It does way more attack damage, it's much faster, and it's going to make our future Skull Cavern runs way easier. What's more, this weapon can be further upgraded when we get to Ginger Island, and I'll show you that later on in the video. Now the Galaxy Hammer is quite expensive, 75,000 gold, the Dagger is 35,000. The Dagger is actually not bad if you're going for a crit build, it's a pretty cool weapon indeed. The Hammer is really good if you like hammers. Now I do recommend you save up and get the Iridium Pickaxe. I know you're using bombs a lot, so you might not need the Pickaxe as much, but to one-shot nodes is incredibly handy inside a Skull Cavern. We're also going to get 10,000 gold from Mr. Key because we might have passed for 25. That's also really nice. Let's now talk about the more advanced sections of Skull Cavalry. It's now time to get yourself set up. It's now time to look at 
how you can do more effective Skull Cavern runs. It all starts with making some lightning rods. This is going to be the first item that you're going to get your hands on that will give you battery packs. You want battery packs for crystallariums. You get this at level 9 mining. But to make a crystallarium, you need battery packs, stone, gold bars, and iridium bars. So all of those bats you've been slaying, keep all the bat wings. Don't sell them, just keep them because you'll be happy that they're there when it's time to make those lightning rods. You'll only be able to make a few crystallariums at the start. You might get lucky in a skull cavern and you might get a few in the treasure rooms. If you go the community center route, you'll also get one from doing the bundles to the vault. So that's one of the big advantages of going the community center route. Just put jades into the crystallariums. Consider putting in one ruby and one diamond just to get the, um, the buff boots. Every Sunday, visit the Desert Trader. Trade in your jades for staircases. If you don't get a good luck day, consider going to the regular mines. Focus on monster eradication goals. Now, my mind looks a bit green at the moment. That's because it's summer and I got the green rain outside. So this is what the mines looks like when you get that moss rain, which I think is pretty cool. I just wanted to show that in this video because I've never seen it before. It's always good to start at the midsection. You need 500 dust sprites to get that burglar ring. It's an amazing ring. Lots of iron down here to make more bombs and coal. When you get level 9 combat, you get the Iridium Band. Now, it's quite expensive to make early on. And the biggest problem with that is the amount of solar essences and vine essences you need. When you get level combat, I, I don't really advise Defender. You should always take Brute, 15% more damage. Because the more damage you do, the faster the enemy is going to die. Problem solved. In this game, my big belief is that the greatest defense is a pretty good offense. Look out for the Prismatic Jelly Community Quest. This is a game changer. Because if you complete that quest, you're going to get the Monster Musk. And that means Monster Eradication goals become much easier. Because a lot more monsters will spawn. Now the Prismatic Slime is a major threat. Do not underestimate it. It will kill you. It hits for an absolute ton of damage. It actually has killed me before on a few occasions. And it's such a pain. Because it is quite the rare spawn. Because I had the Burglar Ring, I get two Prismatic Jellies. The wizard will only take one off you, which is unfortunate, <laughs> but you can use the other one for the decoration. The next day he teaches us the monster musk. It's cheap enough to make, just need a few monster parts. My advice starting out is to aim for two iridium bands. What's great here is you're going to get a 10% decrease in your attack power from each one. You're also going to get some light when it gets dark. That's okay, but the magnetism buff is amazing. So when you're running through the skull caverns or running through the mines in general and blown up ores they're all just floating towards you the side charm ring is pretty good the crab shell ring is very good for defense if you find it you're dying a lot and the napalm ring will pack in those mummies no problem at all so these are all rings obtained from monster eradication goals except for the iridium band you have to craft that ring it's also worth going to robin and building a slime hutch now the slime hutches are now much smaller so you can very easily tuck one of these away in a nice cozy corner of your farm. Marlin will visit you the next day. He will give you a green slime egg for free. You can incubate that. You don't even have to bother with slimes. My advice is to just put one down so you have the ability to harvest eggs from when you kill slimes. It is quite rare, but the eggs do sell for lots of money. Especially when you go into Skull Cavern, the purple eggs do sell for loads of money. So it's just an extra perk for when you're doing your dungeon crawling that the slime eggs might drop. It's just extra income for you. I also recommend upgrading your house at least once so you have the ability to cook. Now, you could sidestep this if you get to Ginger Island and you unlock the house there. That also comes with a cooker. But it is handy having the cooking station on your farm. You also have the cookout kits as well. But I do prefer a permanent cooking station. If you haven't gotten a coffee bean, from slaying all the dust sprites when you're going for those monster eradication goals consider purchasing one from the traveling cart she occasionally sells them for 5,000 gold now it is quite expensive at the start but if you put it into a greenhouse you have it forever and they will rapidly expand every time you harvest one you get more coffee beans and you can plant those rinse and repeat my advice take up maybe one third of the greenhouse that'll keep you going for a while when you get to winter you will get the magnifying glass with this, you can locate some secret notes. My advice is to track down two secret notes that are really good for Skull Caverns. The first will bring you to this truck here. If you give the driver the rabbit's foot, 
he will give you a special charm. This gives you a permanent increase to luck. And that's a game changer for a Skull Cavern run. In order to get that, you just need a secret letter. But there's one more secret letter. And it gives you an amazing buff for dungeon crawling. And it is basically a letter from Mr. Key saying, it's waiting for you on level 100 in the Skull Cavern. Now, if you keep going the way I'm going with the Crystallariums, eventually you can just spam staircases down to this floor. He does mention it if you use staircases, but he will not punish you in any way. You can still take that lovely Iridium Milk, and you will get a permanent increase to your health by 25, which is absolutely amazing. Then it's going to increase your survivability by a huge amount. Every other time you reach level 100 in the Skull Cavern, you'll just get that treasure chest. With the health increase, and with some of the defense items you can equip, you're now much harder to kill. And in my opinion, if you're much harder to kill, you can relax a bit more in the Skull Cavern. Now here comes the fun part. We're now going to talk about end game Skull Cavern when it comes to Sergeant Valley 1.6. It all starts with mastery, a new element that has been added to the game. When you max out all of your skills, you can go to the mastery cave, and every time you get a level in mastery, you can choose a big mastery perk. The Mining Mastery is amazing, Statue of the Dwarf King. This will give you amazing perks, it gives you one perk every day, and that perk lasts for the whole day before it expires. You also get the Heavy Furnace, which is way better than the regular furnace, it can process way more bars, and it can even give you back a lot more resources than what you put into it. Then you have the Combat Mastery. This gives you the Mini Forge, which is the exact same as the Dwarven Forge over on Ginger Island. It also gives you the Anvil and Trinkets, Trinkets really make the game a lot more fun. It adds a lot more dynamic to combat and to dungeon exploration. And I'm going to go through all the trinkets as well in this video for you. The animal is important for upgrading the trinkets. The farming master is also quite good. The statue of blessings there can give us a luck perk. So that's something we want as well. Then we have the mushroom logs. Now I did mention at the start of the video I would show you a life and extra farm. It all starts with the Mystic Tree Seed, so you will need the Foraging Mastery to make these. And the more Mystic Tree Seeds you put around a Mushroom Log, the higher chances you have of those Mushroom Logs producing purple mushrooms. So that is how you farm purple mushrooms in Sarge Valley 1.6, just around these Mushroom Logs with Mystic Tree Seeds. Now in order to make a Life Elixir, we need the Red Mushroom, the Purple Mushroom, the Marl and the Chanterelle. So... We have different types of trees surrounding these mushroom logs so we can very quickly and efficiently get all of the recipes needed within just four days. If we get a rainy day, that will reduce the time frame of when a mushroom log produces mushrooms. Now I have four mushroom logs set up in a grid here. I could easily double these to eight or even twelve. I could I could have way more mushrooms coming out. And you can then bang out tons of of life elixirs this is just the beginner mushroom farm but you can make this way better by adding more mushroom logs if you have the mushroom cave it's an added bonus these heavy furnaces are just brilliant the days of farming for iridium ores and waiting days and days and days to process it are over these furnaces just process a lot more stuff the statue of the dwarf king is just so great it can make you impervious to bomb damage it can even give you Additional buffs such as higher chance to get staircases and shafts. I can even give you an extra perk of plus one ore per node. Combine that with minor and that's two extra ores per node. So let's go to Ginger Island and talk about some of the end game over here. We just have to repair the boat. Some batteries, hardwood and iridium bars and away you go. Robin and Willy will fix up the boat no problem. Let's take a nice stroll up to the edges of the volcano. There's a lovely George parrot up here. It's looking for money and it will find all of the golden walnuts. It's just asking for 1.3 million gold. Why not? I had the cash on me. The parrot will now gather all of its friends and find every single golden walnut on this island. Morris is even here to show some support. Thanks so much, Morris. Let's all thrive together, everyone. We're now farming the volcano dungeon. Now you will have to farm this dungeon a lot until you have received all of the unique items it has to offer. Cinder shards becomes a new resource. You need these to enchant. You need these to merge rings together. So if you see cinder shard nodes, just grab them straight away. Save yourself a headache. It's also a great place to get stone, gold and iridium and other bits and bobs as well. 
But you can also get some amazing rings and armor inside of this volcano dungeon. You can get dragon scale boots, they give a plus 7 defense, which is absolutely amazing. You can get the phoenix ring inside here, which will prevent you from dying once every single day. You can also get the hot java ring. There's a chance when you slay a monster, it will drop a coffee or a triple shot espresso. That's pretty cool indeed. You can also get lots of other cool stuff too, such as dwarvish weapons, dragon tooth weapons. If you don't have a galaxy weapon by now, you could take one of those weapons, enchant them up, make them stronger. You're also going to find rubies and diamonds inside of these dwarven caches and other bits and bobs. My advice is to keep all of the rubies you get. Use those to strengthen your weapon. On level 5, we come across another dwarf. He sells the Book of Power, the Diamond Hunter. There's a chance you can get a diamond from a regular node. That's pretty cool. It's not really important though. If you have the diamonds to spare, grab it. What you're really here for is the ginger ale recipe. That will now substitute the triple shot espresso. It will give you a plus one to luck. If you make it with a key seasoning, you will get a plus two to luck. Combine that with a magic rock candy, and you're going to have some very lucrative Skull Cavern runs indeed. Now, a lot of the enemies in the Volcano Dungeon will drop really cool items. They'll drop pineapples, they'll drop tarot tubers, and you can put these on your Ginger Island farm to make even more money. When you get to the summit here, you will be rewarded with a prismatic shard and that is a one-off reward so use it wisely let's enchant our weapon see what we get now we are hoping for the crusader enchant i find that to be the most useful enchant when you go down into the skull cavern we got bug killer but we can come back later on with more prismatic shards and cinder shards and get more enchants done it's also worth merging some rings together so because i have the phoenix ring i will attempt to merge it with my iridium band I don't have enough cinder shards, so I will have to farm that cave and come back later. Because we have all of the golden walnuts, so you only need 100 out of the 130, and you come in here to Key's secret walnut room, and here is where some of the fun begins. Inside this room, you can purchase some pretty lucrative items. What you're looking for are galaxy swords. There's a few ways you can get these. You can get them here inside Key's secret walnut room. You can also get them of enemies in the hardened versions of the mines. And you can also purchase it off of the Ginger Island Trader on the last day of any season for radioactive bars. So there's a few ways you can grab those galaxy souls. You should also have a look at the quests. You have to do quests to get key gems. That's the main currency to get those items. I would normally take a Skull Cavern Invasion or a Danger in the Deep because there's a chance you can get additional key gems from stained monsters inside those dungeons. There's also a chance you can pick up some really good items too, such as galaxy souls and pressure nozzles and things like that for your farm. So we're just combining rings now. The crab shell ring with the iridium band, really nice. That means we have extra defense, magnetism, extra attack power. We also get the crusader on our galaxy sword, so mummies are now a thing of the past. The best enchants for the pickaxe, in my opinion, are powerful or swift. Powerful just means less strikes to break up those iridium nodes and other nodes. Swift means you strike way faster. Just depends on your own playstyle. The Infinity Blade is very nice. Plus 2 defense, plus 4 speed, and a lot of extra attack power. We're going to put 3 rubies into that as well, because it's going to dramatically increase its attack power further. Now you could put more speed into it, you could put more defense into it, you could put crit damage or chance on it if you want. My advice, just stack it with attack. I also got the Dragon Scale Boots there from a chest on floor 9. That's plus 7 defense. Combined with the Crab Shell Ring, it's going to be very hard to kill my character. I also have the Jack B. Nimble Book of Power. That's an extra plus 1 to defense. So we don't have much to worry about. Let's quickly talk about some of the trinkets. What I'm using here is the Rod of Ice. Every few seconds it fires out an ice projectile. This goes to enemies freezing any enemy in its path. It's a real nice trinket going down into Skull Cavern with. If you're not good at fighting serpents or fast paced enemies, the Rod of Ice is a nice trinket to slow things down. It would help you get yourself sorted. We also have the frog here. This frog is just hilarious. Some people hate him, some people love him. I love him, I think he's adorable. He will one shot any enemy in the game, but beware, this frog when he eats enemy, that enemy will not count towards your monster eradication goal you will also get no items from that enemy. You should now be at the stage where you've tons of prismatic shards from doing loads of Skull Cavern runs and other bits and pieces. 
So every Thursday, without fail, take my advice, visit the desert and purchase that magic rock candy. You can only get one per week. Now there are other methods in the game in which you can get them, but they're incredibly rare. Going to the desert every Thursday is a great way to stock up on them, and it just means that you have two then every time you do a Skull Cavern run. If you play on co-op, you can purchase them multiple times depending on how many players you have in the game because each player can purchase one each. That's also a great way to stock up. The heavy furnaces now, you just need maybe 5 or 10 of those and you can go through hundreds of ore quite easily. More Iridium Bars for you. With the Blacksmith Perk, 1500 gold a pop is a no-brainer. With Key Seasoning, you just need some ginger and sugar. You can buy sugar from here, no problem. It's a simple item to make. You now have huge amounts of luck going into the skull cavern but you can get way more luck these are just the consumables upgrade your pan to an iridium pan and fish yourself up a lucky ring get two of these each ring gives a plus one to luck bring those to the forge and merge them with something else whatever your play style is these lucky rings are now simple to get because you can upgrade the pan to iridium quality it just means that you have a much greater yield every time you pull stuff about it up the river with the pen. It's just amazing. You can also enchant the pen as well with some really cool stuff. Generous is a great one. Just get more back. The lucky ring with an iridium band. I'm only taking the iridium band because of the magnetism and the attack power buff. The iridium band is an all round great ring. My second combination is a napalm ring with a lucky ring. I love when monsters explode and when you find extra staircases. I also have the Infinity Blade with Crusader, and I also have my Pickaxe with Powerful. You should also strive now for a big shed, fill it up with Crystallariums, and have all those processed jades. It will take quite some time, but I'm going to show you a great way to make Crystallariums early on in the game by using a few additional items you can get from doing keys quests. Once you've purchased a load of staircases with jades, there's an item called a Deconstructor, okay? If you put a staircase into a deconstructor, you'll get back 99 stone. So you're probably thinking, what you need stone for? Isn't just stone used primarily for staircases? Not at all, friends. You need stone to make crystallariums. So the deconstructor will see to it that you have tons and tons of stone to make loads of crystallariums. You should also pick up the community quest that will, from Caroline that will teach you the solar panels. Just pop these out in the desert every few days. You can visit the desert, get your battery packs. That's your stone and your battery packs taken care of. You can get the rest of the resources by just doing skull cavern runs. You just need gold bars and iridium bars. And you'll very easily be able to bang out tons of crystallariums. That is how you make loads of crystallariums. Just use the solar panels, use the deconstructors and just go into skull cavern. And get loads of gold bars and iridium bars. And you'll be able to make loads in no time. So we just got a statue of blessings there. That gives us the plus one to luck. And we got a nice buff there too with the Statue of Dwarf King. An increased chance in finding holes and staircases. Because today's good luck day, we're going to venture off and do a Skull Cavern run. I didn't realise today was the uh, desert event. But we're going to do it anyway to see what kind of rank we can get. So this desert event, it has a really cool ranking system. Every time you get down five floors in the Skull Cavern, you gain a rank. But every time you um, activate a statue... Inside the Skull Cavern, you also gain an extra rank. But the statues can either bless you or curse you. You're taking a gamble, you see. Because we've saved up on staircases, all we have to do is just spam ladders. My advice when you have this many staircases is to spam ladders. Till you get to about floor 300. Nab the lovely three treasure chests. Once you've nabbed those treasure chests, then start exploring and start blowing up rooms. You're going to end up with hundreds upon hundreds of iridium ore, gold ore, you're also going to get an unmerciful amount of treasure rooms because you're coming here with all the luck buffs. You've got the luck buff from the statue, you've got the luck buff from the ginger ale with the key seasoning, you've got the luck buff from the magic rock candy, you've got the luck buff from the television, you also have the luck buff from your two lucky rings. You are basically a luck machine. And when you come into Skull Cavern with that much luck, every few floors you're going to hit a treasure a treasure room and these treasure rooms can give you auto petters auto grabbers crystallariums they can give you bombs they can give you prismatic shards they can give you so many cool items because i have crusader and the napalm ring it just makes for a magnificent combination here when it comes to dungeon exploration 
I'm after getting a ridiculous rank of 130. Let's see what Gil has to say. <laughs> he makes such a wonderful face. He just can't believe it. It's just so funny. Concerned Abe, you're just a legend to add such a portrait to that man. It's been too many years since he's made that calm face every time we went into him to showcase our incredible monster slaying skills. <laughs> he also gives us a magic rock candy as well, which is really nice. Tons of calico eggs. Finally, it's worth noting the way of the wind part one. That's a permanent speed increase. If you have the money, consider getting that early or mid game. The price catalog is handy as well, because if you're trying to figure out what to throw away inside Skull Cavern, the price catalog will help you because it'll show you the worth of an item. Way of the Wind Part 2 becomes available once you unlock Way of the Wind Part 1. This will make your character even faster and that is on a permanent basis. So I am going to leave the video there. I hope you enjoyed my guide to Skull Cavern, Stardew Valley 1.6. All my channel members, thanks a million for supporting me. And everyone else, stay tuned for more content in the near future. I hope you have a great week. Bye for now.